Hey, Michael Goder here with Success for Others, and today we're going to talk about the five reasons that people don't buy, the reasons why they don't invest or take you up on your recommendations um, while you're in the home for a service call or for a sales call or they choose to hold off and wait or whatever the reason is. But here's the five reasons why people don't buy. Now, this is not genuinely my material. I was listening to an author named Larry Wignett that's pretty, pretty powerful. I really enjoy a lot of his teachings and he had heard this years and years ago and doesn't know, doesn't quite remember exactly who it was that he heard it from, but he's been using his teachings ever since and so he's given me permission to go ahead and use this in my teachings as well. So I want to make sure I give credit where credit is due, but these are the five reasons why people don't buy and they really were pretty powerful for me so I hope you get something out of them as well. So reason number one is um, that people don't buy is that they're just just don't have a need, right? They just don't have the need. But we got to understand this. Number one, in our business, typically on a breakdown, the need's there, right? They got to do something. But when the, there isn't an immediate need, when there isn't a breakdown, it's not DOA or whatever have you, that need can be a, a challenge sometimes. But we have to realize, we got to get our arms around this one simple fact. People very rarely buy only what they need. We invest in stuff every single day, all day long, of things that we don't really need. They're impulse buys, they're whatever you want to call them, but constantly, you and I both, we sit down and we go to a store or we go out somewhere and we buy stuff that we don't absolutely have to have. It's just the nature um, of, of human beings. So at the end of the day, this is not completely required as long as we have the other areas in place. People don't very, very rarely buy only what they need. Right? That's why we live in 3,000 square foot houses or 2,000 square foot houses. We don't need it, but we want it, and that's a big difference. So that leads us to number two, there's just no hurry, right? I mean, what's... There's just no hurry. There's no immediate need. I mean, we could even need it, and we could even want it, but we just don't have to do it now. We can hold off for a little while. We can wait three months, six months, a year, whatever it may be. And that is actually our job. I mean, that is your job as a service technician, as a salesperson, as a CSR, as a, an owner, a manager, whatever have you, is to you know, really create that urgency because let's face it, if you just wait for weather to create your urgency or breakdowns, your business is going to be extremely seasonal. So that's somewhere that, you know, with a good solid presentation, with good focus and good training and good skills, you can create the need, you can create the hurry, you can create the urgency um, and, and, and eliminate this as well. So the top two reasons, again, people don't buy, there's no need and there's no hurry, and both of which we can overcome relatively easy. The third one is one that we get all the time, and it's the fact that there's no money. Right? And we make this a huge, huge problem. We put a barrier up when it comes to money more so than our customers. Because the reality is this. Again, people very, very seldom live within their means. People very, very seldom you know, don't utilize credit or credit cards or loans or things of that nature. So you know, we don't always wait until we have the money in our wallet and in our pocket to buy the things that we really, really want and we see the benefit in. We go out and buy them. That's what we do, and everybody does that. So at the end of the day, this is a lot easier than what most people make it out to be. I mean, at the end, anybody can get a proof of financing pretty much today. Uh, financing is back. The purse strings are not nearly as tight as what they were three, four, five years ago. So at the end of the day, the money is relatively simple, and we can work around that. We make that a barrier more so than the customer. We assume they're not going to qualify for financing. We assume they don't have the room on the credit card. We assume they don't have the money in the bank account to purchase purchase or to approve our recommendations or our suggestions and therefore we don't even talk about them. We don't even bring them up and that's a big, big, big mistake. So the money's a big one as well. Now the next one is there's no want or no desire. Right? I mean, they don't really have to have it. They don't need it. It's not broken down. They're really not in any hurry, you know, any of that thing. But they just don't, they don't have a desire. They don't have the want for it because they don't understand it. And again, that fits right into what our job description is, right? I mean, first and foremost, we're educators. We go into a home and our job is to educate that homeowner on all of the things that we can do to improve their quality of life within that home. And whether that be their comfort, their utility system, Savings, noise reduction, increase of health and safety, you know, reduction of dust, you know, 
we can have such a huge impact on so many different areas in the customer's house, but if we don't talk about it, if we don't educate the customer on this thing, on all of these things, so that they understand, not that we understand, but that they understand in their terms, on their level, then guess what? Of course they're not going to have a want. So your job is to create that want. That's what we do, right? And when you have, again, when you have a very good presentation, when you have a process in which you follow, and, and there's things that you can do throughout your visit to create these and overcome these, you, you know, you have tremendous results. I mean, there's service technicians all over the country who are doing over a million dollars of revenue out of their truck, have average tickets over a thousand dollars. You know, we have sales professionals in our industry selling two, three plus million dollars every single single year with average tickets well over $10,000 and closing rates of 70-80% and they don't do that just by winging it, right? They have a process and they focus on these areas. So the fifth and final area is no trust. I mean, at the end of the day, we can do a great job of overcoming the first four. We can go ahead and deal with this, but if they don't like you, if they don't trust you, it's over. There's nothing you can do. So your first goal with every single customer is to treat that customer the way that you want to be treated, right? Your goal is to build that trust. We have to put 80% of our focus on communicating and building that relationship with the customer and 20% of our focus on the actual box itself or the service that's being rendered. So again, no trust, there's nothing. You got nothing. You don't have a customer. You're not. They're not going to go ahead with the re recommendations, the repairs. You know, a new system, whatever it may be. They're just not going to use you. So first and foremost, we have to focus on building this trust, treating people the way we want to be treated, smiling, making sure that they recognize us for the expert that we are, and that's really the biggest thing. So these are the five reasons why people don't why people don't buy. So no need, no hurry, no money, no tr no want, and no trust. Make sure you're focused on this. We have control over all of this stuff. What we say, what we do, how we say it, how we look, how we act, everything that we do in that home should be based around taking these barriers down and removing them so that people will go forward with us. So at the end of the day, make sure you're dressing for success. Make sure you're positioning yourself as the expert and make sure that you're communicating to your customer extremely effectively in a positive tone, in a positive manner, so that, that you're creating an emotion, you're creating a feeling of like and trust, and then they realize, you know what, hey, you can have such a huge impact on their quality of life that they go ahead with your recommendations or your suggestions or your repairs. So again, Michael Goder with Success for Others. If you haven't connected with us already, um, you can connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Success for Others, www.success, the number four, others.com. Visit us on our website, see what we're all about. If we can be of any service to you in any way, shape, or form, please reach out and call us, shoot us an email. We'd be happy to help you and your team achieve better results in the coming months than what you may have experienced already. So again, I hope you've enjoyed today's message and please enjoy the rest of your day.